lost that one across the ladder. That's a small world. Are you here? bothered by them occasionally, okay, but they're not really looking for drugs. So they don't stop you automatically if you have a tin can of marijuana with you. Right. But ever since I've been legal, I've always gone to the airport two hours early, even long before 9-11. Right. And now today, when I leave Fort Lauderdale, I always call the head of the police department at the airport, and we can advance. We give him my itinerary, tell him exactly what flight I'm on and what time I'm to security. They then send a letter out to the policeman in that area. And so if TSA does stop me and they call the police and they go, we've got a gentleman here, Urban Rosenfeld, with a tin can of marijuana, the police will go, we know. He's legal. Thank you very much. Right. So I don't get bothered being legal anymore. That's good. And I, and I have his private cell phone number, so if I were to get bothered going through New Hampshire Airport, you know, I'd show him all the information. Plus, thank God, with, you know, with, with the Internet now, you just Google my name. Right. You'll pull up thousands of articles on me and videos and everything else. So that usually suffices. doesn't, then I have the private cell phone numbers of the captain of the police department in my hometown, and again, the head of the police department at Fort Lauderdale International I have his private cell phone number. So, because again, it's only four in the country that have the right to do this. Right. So you can't, you can't blame police or TSA or whatever for being alarmed by it. You can't get upset. You can't say, I'm legal, you know, leave me alone. You've got to explain to Hey, unusual circumstance, but it's, you know, it's the way it is. smoke cigarettes as well? Or? No. Have you noticed any, any pulmonary issues? Any? Uh... The last time my lung capacity was checked, uh, I was 108% of normal. Oh, okay. Marijuana does not cause lung cancer. Mm -hmm. Studies have been done by the top physicians in the country, and they did a 10-year study, and they couldn't find one case of lung cancer due to the counts. In fact, really, it's a neuroprotectant. The study also pointed out that people that smoke cigarettes and cannabis had less cancers than the people that just smoke cigarettes. Wow. And, and I grew up in Virginia. So I, I joke with people, as a state law in Virginia, that once you become 15, it used to be that you had to smoke cigarettes. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, true. <laughs> yeah, actually, such a big tobacco state. Yeah, that's right. And I actually so, have copies of that article, the, the study you're mentioning. I always leave them in the smoking lounge. Mm -hmm. Study finds no cancer marijuana connection. It's a Washington mm -hmm. Post article. Dr. Donald right. Tashkin. Dr. Donald yep. Tashkin. Good guy. Great doctor. Okay. I mean, what I love about him, even though he was a main physician for 30 years to try to prove how bad cannabis is to the human body. His studies, he's honest. Meaning, here's his study, here's what he believes. He does his study and then reports the results. Right, wrong, and different, doesn't matter. Whatever the results are, that's what he reports. So I appreciate that. He's an honest position, you know, and I like that. So, as he said, he said, Yeah, I really thought it caused lung cancer. I couldn't find one case of it. I was wrong. And he admitted it. So, sugarcoating his study. I have smoked forever. 
and I went to the doctor the other day, they clipped that little thing on my finger. My oxygen <coughs> saturation was 95%. My blood pressure is normal. My cholesterols are good. And my MS started in 1976. And the first thing that gave me any help with the fear was cannabis. Well, I don't recommend for anybody to smoke cigarettes. But yeah. I do tell people if they do smoke cigarettes, they should smoke cannabis. Yeah. Also, it's like you have to. And with college students here, I'll point out something else, okay? Which I, I speak to a lot of college students as well. And I'll take a look at uh, you two, okay? You are a procrastinator. A month ago, a month ago, a, a professor gave you a paper to write. Yep. It's due tomorrow, Monday, and it's Sunday at noon. And you went, oh crap! I forgot all about that paper I got to write. You go and smoke a joint, maybe even two of them. Then you sit down, you write your paper, you make some corrections the next morning, and you hand it in. You have it exactly. You're in the same <laughs> class he's in. You're in the same class he's in. Okay, Absolutely. you're in the same class. It's Sunday at noon. You go, oh, God, I forgot all about that paper. You go to smoke a joint, and then you go, oh, man, screw it. I don't feel like writing that paper. You're giving me a bad name. Meaning, cannabis harms you. It makes you a vegetable. It makes you where you don't want to do anything. You're lethargic. Nothing wrong with that. Just don't ever do it unless you can afford to be lethargic. Right, exactly. Be somewhere where you know, it doesn't matter. Okay, but if you've got work to do, it messes you up. You, it enhances your thought process. It doesn't harm you at all. So fine, God bless you, you do it. But you've got to know what cannabis does to you. Okay, and if it harms you in any way, then don't, don't put yourself in harm's way. Because if you do, and something happens, then what I'm trying to do out here gives me a bad name. I've got to answer for you. I don't like that. Yeah, I just wish I could go to a store and buy, like, know what I'm buying. Mm -hmm. Like, certain varieties tend to help me do schoolwork and put in that state of mind, but right. others are immediate couch potatoes. So yes, really sativa nice and indica to, makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, it'd be really nice yep. to have that. Mm -hmm. It would be, and one day hopefully that will happen, but yeah. until then, <laughs> until then, you know, just know that cannabis is just cannabis. Yeah. And if anything, any way any cannabis harms you, then never put yourself in that position. You know, the, the bill originally in New Hampshire originally um, covered post-traumatic stress syndrome and that was stripped out of it. Now it's a big disappointment, I think, for a lot of people because we were hoping that we could become part of the groundbreaking um, research and development that's going on. Um, mm -hmm. Now all they do is put you on, on clonopin and send you on your way, and, and we we're hoping that, that that could be part of it. So it was a disappointment that that got stripped out. Well, again, I would you know state to your representatives, the Veterans Administration, who better to say whether it's a medicine or not for your veteran? And they say it is. Yeah. So why do you know more than the Veterans Administration? You know, you ask them that. Yeah. Of course, I always ask them, why do, you know more, why do you think you know more than the American Medical Association or the American Nurses Association? When they sanction? So yeah, PTS is definitely a disorder. And it works. Israel's studying it. Israel's using it for that reason. And I think all you know, other countries are looking into it. Yeah. Well, and this country should. You know, and they are. In other states, other states it's allowed. <coughs> but again, in yes, and again, veterans are going to do it anyway. Once they learn, they're going to do it anyway, they, whether you have a law saying they can do it or not. Yeah. Are they going to worry about breaking a law? They fought a war. They killed people. Are they going to worry about some kind of words on a paper saying that they're a criminal? So if that's a need of medicine, they should be able to use it. The, now, the pharmaceutical industry, do you think that some of their opposition to this is because they want the market, they want to get... They want to bring it into pill form and make the money well, that de way? Well, definitely that's the case. I mean, they, they want it only substantiated by FDA. And they make it sound like that before there was FDA, there was never a medicine in this country. You know, until FDA sanctioned it. So the pharmaceutical industry does not want to see anything that can be, that you can do without using them. And the problem with this is you can go home and grow your own. Okay, and that's one of the major problems that the pharmaceutical industry has. It's true. You can empower yourself through your own treatment rather than exactly. going to them. Exactly. And so that's one of the major problems that the, that the pharmaceutical industry has with this. It, it's becoming, obviously, we all know, it's, it's becoming a huge problem. The, the Oxycontin, it's just, everywhere you look, you know, I have friends <coughs> who have, have 17 to 25 year old kids and they're getting, they're destroying their lives within six months of getting involved in that stuff. It's really, uh, it's amazing that it's just taken over so much. Pharmaceutical drugs are, and kids are abusing it, because again, where are they getting it from? Their parents' um, um, medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. That's really where they're getting it from. I think so. one of the most 